I have a dream that occurs every night, and that dream is a very terrifying nightmare. In the dream, I see countless zombies roaming the city. Their crazy and diseased eyes make me scared. I can even smell their disgusting odor from a distance. The scene of this hellish painting is called the zombie apocalypse. In the dream, I see cities that are destroyed and filled with zombies, a nightmare where the whole world lives in hell. And I, who is in this nightmare, am standing on top of this city building. In front of me, there is a mission window that says I have to kill all the zombies on Earth with the reward that I will return to my original condition. My name is Shin Jairim. I am a hunter who lives to eradicate all zombies. Now, shall we begin? I talk to myself to prepare myself to start fighting. I then press a button on a remote. Shortly after, dozens of bombs that I prepared explode in various places in the city. There is even an explosion that causes a large building to collapse and crush thousands of zombies. I jump off the building with my gun ready to attack the zombies in front of me. The zombies begin to realize my presence and all of them start running towards me. The zombies' roars are heard very loudly. I take a deep breath to prepare myself for the zombie attack. With the swing of my chain whip, I severed the legs of the oncoming zombies and kicked the ones that managed to escape my grasp. I continued to swing my chain whip, crushing the heads of the attacking zombies. Then I heard a roar from behind as a zombie attempted to attack me. I kept swinging my chain whip again and again to destroy these zombies until there were no more approaching zombies in sight. Finally, I stopped swinging the blood-soaked chain whip. I let out a sigh of relief and cursed those zombies. Suddenly, the entire city shook. I didn't understand what was happening. I thought it was just an earthquake. But I was very wrong. On the asphalt not far from where I stood, a giant worm-like zombie emerged with a mouth full of numerous teeth. The worm quickly attacked me with its mouth and destroyed me. Shortly after, the mission window appeared and stated that my quest had failed and I had died. I woke up from my dream and shouted that this dream was extremely unfair. In the morning after waking up from that dream, I went to report my dream to the psychiatrist named Choi Nai. I wrote down the nightmare I had last night and handed it to Professor Choi Naya. He said that this 99th round was very sad. He said it felt like just yesterday when I cried uncontrollably. He praised me for growing up. Upon hearing Professor Choi Naye's words, I could only look down. Two years ago, an unexpected nightmare appeared. It repeatedly showed the deaths of helpless people. In the first dream, I was bitten by zombies, which woke me up from my sleep. The dream felt so real that it made me vomit. This dream truly destroyed my life. I was dying both physically and mentally. That's why I started undergoing psychological counseling. It was during that time that I first met Professor Choi Naya. He asked me if I wanted counseling because of my nightmares. I nodded to answer Professor Choi Naya's question. He asked what the nightmare was like. Sweat started to flow as I recalled that terrible dream. I answered that the nightmare was about zombies. That's when my treatment began. Counseling, hypnosis, I even took medication. But the nightmare still didn't go away. Each day I became thinner and more insane. In the next counseling session, Professor Choi Naya asked if the nightmare was always the same. He then gave me an empty notebook. I asked what the notebook was for. Professor Choi Naya explained that he wanted me to write everything clearly about what I experienced in my dreams, and he would focus on my dreams. I didn't understand what Professor Choi Naya meant by focusing on my nightmare. Professor Choi Naya then explained, First, we would determine where I could go or not go in my dreams, and then remember as much as possible and write it down. Professor Choi Naya handed me a pen. I once again experienced a nightmare. I was sitting on the ground watching someone being bitten by a zombie. I remembered Professor Choi Naya's advice to go to the storage room because there should be many useful weapons there. I convinced myself and pressured myself to do what he said. I then ran towards the storage room. Inside, I found an iron pipe lying on the ground. I thought I could use it as a weapon. I returned and ran while shouting. Then I smashed the zombie's head using the iron pipe I found. The zombie died on the ground. I finally succeeded. That's when my nightmare began to change. Professor Choi Naye crossed his arms and said that he had reached his limit. He asked me if I would move on my own during the 100th episode. 
I replied, Sometimes humans can be more hated than zombies. Professor Choi Naya was sure that there must be some good people too. But I was more convinced that good people must have already refused to get involved. Even though it was just a dream, I only saw one or two people die trying to help me. I didn't have the strength to protect others. People would really go crazy if they kept seeing it. Hearing my story, Professor Choi Naya thought that my dream must have felt so real. That's why the shock of losing his comrades must have been very great too. Professor Choi Nye then placed the book he received from me and invited me to have soup because it was already lunchtime. I blinked and said that he would save me. We arrived in front of the restaurant. Professor Choi Nye invited me to come in. While eating, Professor Choi Nye sipped the soup. He seemed very pleased by praising how delicious the soup was. He asked for my opinion if I agreed with him or not. I replied that I agreed with him. Not far from the table where I was eating, there was a man's voice angrily speaking harshly in front of the cashier. The man wondered why the cashier did not let him pay for his meal. The man was angry because he had to leave now, but the cashier did not respond at all. Something crossed my mind. It couldn't be, I thought. Professor Choi Ne asked me if something happened and I replied that there was no problem at all. Amidst the incident, suddenly blood started flowing from the cashier's eyes and saliva also dripped from his mouth. The cashier smiled. The angry man was shocked to see this. He asked why the cashier was smiling to himself in a rude manner. The cashier then lunged at the angry man and bit his neck. Impossible. I couldn't believe that this would really happen. Dreams are dreams, and reality is reality. But now that dream has become a reality, and that dream is not just an ordinary dream. The man being bitten by the cashier struggled and cried for help. This is a very bad dream. The woman eventually met her demise at the hands of the zombie cashier. Professor Choi Naye, who witnessed the incident, appeared startled and worried. Shortly after, screams could be heard from outside, with people being attacked by zombies. Some were crying out for help, some were screaming in pain, and even a young child was calling out for their mother. Witnessing this, my hands began to tremble as I clutched my pants. The zombie cashier, Having finished devouring the man, now lunged towards me. I grabbed a large bowl and hurled it at the zombie's head. However, it was clear that the bowl was not enough to kill the zombie. I ran to grab a broom that caught my eye. I then took the broom and broke off the head to use as a weapon. The zombie charged at me. It almost caught me, but I dodged to the left. The zombie stumbled and fell, failing to reach me. Seizing the opportunity, I stabbed the zombie's neck with the sharp end of the broom that I had broken earlier. The zombie then stopped moving, indicating that I had successfully killed it. I also thought that maybe I often have nightmares, so when I received this bitter reality, I could think clearly. Professor Choi Naya called me with his trembling voice. I asked if he was okay. Professor Choi Naya told me to put that aside for now, and the fear that I had just killed the cashier. Seeing Professor Choi Naya's very worried face, I asked Professor Choi Naya if he still didn't understand the current situation. I explained to him that the people attacking others right now are walking corpses, in other words, zombies. Professor Choi Naya seemed incredulous. I explained again that what I had written in the notebook had become reality. Professor Choi Naya looked towards the notebook that I had brought earlier. Shortly after, there was an explosion in the distance. From the timing of this explosion, if it's the same as my dream, then the explosion happened at the gas station. Professor Choi Naye was very shocked to hear the explosion. Now I'm sure. There is no mistake. My dreams and reality have become the same. If that's the case, I'm sure this artisan village will soon be filled with zombies. I started to feel restless. And the problem is not only this village. Round 7, Seoul, Korea, Round 23, China, Forbidden City, Round 48, America, New York, and Round 99. The nightmare ends with the extinction of humanity. To continuously become stronger, the zombies have defeated human civilization. From the beginning, this battle has been heavily one-sided. And there is only one future for me. When I see my birthplace burning, I can survive. Suddenly. I hear a notification sound, like the one we usually hear from a phone or a game. I'm surprised to see it, 
because in front of me appears the mission window that I often see in my nightmares. I don't understand what is actually happening. I'm confused as to why something from my dream can appear here, in the mission window. It is written that I have to escort and protect Professor Choi Nye Naya to my house. Furthermore, it is stated in the mission window that I have a time limit of three hours to complete it. But what catches my attention is that if I complete this mission, I will receive the skill Transmission as a reward. I have to calm myself down. At least I can find out how all 99 nightmares happened. So the question why will not help me at all. The mission window asks if I want to accept this challenge or not, a mission that I have never completed before. I have a bad feeling about it. But maybe, with this choice, it will change my future filled with despair. Professor Choinea asks if I am okay. I answer that I am fine. I remember that only I can see this mission window. Professor Choi Naya, upon hearing my answer, feels grateful. I also remember the figure of Professor Choi Naya who has turned into a zombie. And that is Professor Choi Naya Naya who has turned into a zombie. The front wall of the restaurant suddenly collapsed. The zombies outside began to try to enter the restaurant. I instructed Professor Choi Naya to run. Outside, the streets were filled with zombies. However, luckily, they were not as fast as us. We ran to the storage room where I found an iron pipe in my first nightmare. The two of us managed to enter the storage room and lock the iron door in the hope that the zombies could not enter. We were both out of breath from running away from the zombies. I then approached a cabinet and tried to open it. Professor Choi Naya, who saw me, did not understand and called my name. He was surprised to see me rolling up a chain on my arm to use as a weapon. I told Professor Choi Naya to get ready because we would fight them until we reached my house. Professor Choi Naya, who heard my words, could only be confused. I prepared myself to start fighting. I then unlocked and opened this iron door. The sound of zombie growls could be heard everywhere. The sound of the open iron door caught the attention of the zombies, and they began to run towards me. I started swinging the chain in my hand, then I swung my chain and crushed the head of a zombie. Using the momentum of the chain swing, I swung my chain towards the next zombie and crushed its head. I then ran towards the zombies and shouted. Seeing what was happening, Professor Choi Naya looked very impressed while holding my notebook. Amidst the crowd of zombies, I, swinging my chain, pondered that perhaps because I had done this in my dreams, I felt that swinging this chain was already very familiar to me. I continued to destroy the zombies using the swing of my chain. Professor Choi Nai, who was impressed by what was happening, was reminded of the past. In the past, Professor Choi Naye asked me why I used a chain as a weapon. I replied that first, it was because I could easily find it when my dream began. And second, because the attack range and durability were much better than a knife or a stick. Seeing what was happening in front of him, Professor Choi Naya now understood why I chose a chain as a weapon. While I was fighting the zombies, one of the zombies that managed to get close tried to bite me. I blocked its bite with my chain. The bite of the zombies was indeed strong, but their bite was not strong enough to break this iron chain. I swung my chain and launched a series of attacks. Another zombie now attacked me from behind. I kicked my swinging chain to change the direction of the swing towards the zombie attacking me and crushed its head. Professor Choi Naye, who witnessed this, was very surprised. He did not expect someone to use a chain as a weapon like that. After dealing with that one zombie, I prepared my chain again and ran back into the crowd of zombies to face them while shouting. Despite having defeated quite a number of zombies, new zombies continued to emerge. I instructed Professor Choi Naye to run immediately. We ran towards my house, leaving behind the zombies that had taken over the village. Finally, Professor Choi Naya and I arrived at my house. The current condition of my house is relatively safe, because it is located far from the village and secluded. I asked Professor Choi Naya to enter my house. He sat down on the floor. Worried, I asked if he was okay. He replied that he was fine, just relieved to have survived the incident earlier. I then helped Professor Choi Naya to stand up and offered him a seat on the sofa. After he sat down, a mission window suddenly appeared in front of me, stating that my mission was successful. Finally, I obtained the skill Transmission.
I tried to read and understand the new skill that I had acquired. The transmission skill is ranked F. With this skill, I can acquire skills from an expert. Reading this skill only confused me. Moreover, what does expert mean? There should be some limitations to prevent people from misunderstanding this. The mission window pointed towards Professor Choi Nea and explained that I was close enough to him and could use the transmission skill on him. Although I was hesitant, I decided to give it a try. I whispered to activate the transmission skill. Suddenly, a magical circle appeared above and below both of us. I was surprised, but Professor Choi Naya didn't react. It seemed like he couldn't see what I saw. Then a message window appeared congratulating me for acquiring a skill. I checked the new skill I obtained. The skill was called Mental Care, and it was ranked F. This skill allowed me to heal someone's mental state. I felt happy. I finally gained a skill. Moreover, the skills I acquired were very useful. Professor Choi Naye lit his cigarette with his lighter and took a puff. He then called me and asked if the monsters earlier were zombies because it was written in my notebook. Professor Choi Naye was very confused at the moment and didn't understand what was happening. He even thought that he might be having a nightmare. Professor Choi Naye was panicking. His voice sounded quite chaotic. He was relieved to have survived, but now he was experiencing mental distress. Since this was a scene I often encountered in my dreams, I thought it was the right time to use my skill. I silently invoked the mental care skill to activate it. A message window appeared, stating that my skill had successfully activated and that someone's mental state had been strengthened. In Professor Choi Naye extinguished his cigarette. He now looks much better. He also mentioned that it is a good thing that we are still alive and asked me if I share the same opinion. He believes that the world will improve, so they should cheer themselves up. Skill mental care seems to be working well. I think that the transmission skill is very good because I can acquire skills from others. I then realized that the craftsmen living in this village have all kinds of crafts and intangible cultural heritage, and many talented professionals with long life experiences living as villagers. I am very excited and start to smile as an idea comes to my mind. I will learn skills from these professionals next. In the evening at a gas station, there is a bald old man with extraordinary muscles and mustache, bare-chested, crossing his arms. His eyes shine and he smiles. He is a 73-year-old martial arts master named Park Dalbong. A few months ago, I had a series of ten consecutive nightmares. I was walking outside with a gloomy expression. As I was walking, I heard the voices of elderly people calling me. The people calling me were two elderly individuals named Yung Yung Chun and Park Dalbong. Yung Yung Chun is a 78-year-old wood craftsman, while the other elderly person is Park Dalbong, a martial artist from the Joseon Heavenly Demon Martial Arts School. Joseon Heavenly Demon Martial Art is an ancient teaching that has been passed down for 23 generations. Grandfather Yung Yung Chun said that I looked terrible and asked if I had been dreaming about zombies again. Then, Grandfather Park Dalbong said that it was all because I didn't have enough stamina. He grumbled about the youth of today. Grandfather Park Dalbong then said to not worry because he had red ginseng extract at his house. He told me to consume it so that my body would be filled with energy. I tried to refuse because I felt uncomfortable especially since the price of red ginseng is currently expensive. Grandfather Park Dalbong assured me that it was okay and advised me to exercise and take care of my health. In my current condition, I can only express my gratitude for their kindness. In a room at the gas station, Yung Yung Chun is seen hiding under a trembling table, holding his head in fear. One of the zombies, noticing Yung Chun's bald head, approaches him. The zombie attempts to attack Yung Yung Chun, who becomes even more frightened and believes that this is the end for him. However, the zombie's attack never arrives, because Park Dalbong destroys the zombie's head with his fist, saving Yung Yung Chun. Park Dalbong asks if Yung Chun is okay, and Yung Chun appears very happy to see Park Dalbong. Shortly after, the zombies start entering the room. Park Dalbong asks Yung Yung Chun to wait for him for a moment as he will take care of the incoming zombies. Dozens of zombies run towards Dalbong. Park Dalbong smiles and takes out his martial arts skills and punches in front of the zombies. 
Currently, I am riding my motorcycle towards the place where Grandfather Young Young Chun and Grandfather Park Dalbong are. Grandfather Park Dalbong is a martial arts expert. I am very confident that he can defeat ordinary zombies without any problems. However, in my dreams, the elders always die. I am going to the place where the elders are because there are two dangerous variables there. I twist the motorcycle's throttle deeper to arrive faster. I hope I am not too late. The Park Dalbong was attacked by zombies. However, with the strength of Park Dalbong, it only took one punch to defeat a zombie. All these ordinary zombies were rendered powerless in front of Park Dalbong. Young Young Chun, who witnessed the incident, praised Park Dalbong for being so strong. He also said that maybe he should join Park Dalbong and learn from the Hoseon dynasty as well. Standing amidst a group of corpses, Park Dalbong laughed. He said it was a pity that ordinary people would not be able to learn the Hoseon heavenly demon martial art. Only strong people like him could learn this martial art technique. Jung Jung Chun said it was a shame and imagined if only he was born with a body as strong as Dal Bong's. Suddenly, they both heard a loud noise from outside. Shortly after, the zombies entered the room again. Not only that, but one of the zombies had a human-like figure and was very large. It was so big that it left cracks in the ground it stepped on. Strangely, there was a gemstone on the forehead of that zombie. Young Young Chun, who saw the zombie, screamed in fear. Park Dalbong, who saw the zombie, guessed that the zombie was about 2 meters 50 centimeters tall, or maybe even 3 meters. The big zombie picked up the ordinary zombie next to it and ate its head. Park Dalbong and Young Young Chun, who witnessed the incident, didn't understand what was happening. The zombie being eaten stopped moving and was thrown by the big zombie that ate it. The big zombie then let out a very long roar. Seeing the enemy in front of him, Park Dalbong said that an interesting enemy had arrived. Park Dalbong sprinted and leaped towards the massive zombie. He then prepared his fists in the air. He unleashed the double-fisted tiger's energy attack, the second technique of the Josean Heavenly Demon martial art, Tiger's Chaos Dance. Park Dalbong relentlessly punched the head of the massive zombie. The zombie could only roar in pain from Dalbong's continuous attacks. Satisfied with his assault, Park Dalbong made the zombie roar in anger. Park Dalbong was astonished that the massive zombie could still fight back despite being beaten. The zombie grabbed both of Dalbong's hands and attempted to match his strength. The massive zombie continued to roar. Park Dalbong, who could match the strength of this huge zombie, was also impressive because he could fight against an enemy much larger than himself. While battling the zombie, Park Dalbong began to realize that this opponent was not an ordinary one. However, in the midst of their power struggle, Park Dalbong fell due to his injured waist. Even someone as strong as him was no match for the effects of aging. Jung Jung Chun, who witnessed what happened, became worried about Park Dalbong. He suddenly remembered that Dalbong's waist often got displaced. Park Dalbong was now extremely vulnerable and in a dangerous situation. The massive zombie attempted to finish off Dalbong. It swung its large arm towards Park Dalbong, but suddenly, the head of the massive zombie was attacked by a chain that appeared out of nowhere. The massive zombie roared in pain once again. From the direction of the chain attack, Shin Jerem appeared, coming to rescue Park Dalbong and Young Young Chun. After my attack landed on the head of the big zombie, I declared my intention to save both of them to them. Grandfather Young Young Chun and Grandfather Park Dalbong were surprised to see my arrival. Grandfather Park Dalbong wondered why I was here. I already suspected that there were two variables here. The first one is the problem with Grandfather Park Dalbong's waist. I shouted at them to run before it's too late. Then the second variable is the appearance of the big mutant zombie. Grandfather Young Young Chun ran towards Grandfather Park Dalbong and helped him stand up. Grandfather Park Dalbong apologized to Grandfather Jung Jung Chun for causing him trouble. Both of them walked towards the motorcycle that I had parked. Seeing the two of them trying to escape, the mutant zombie roared loudly and attacked me with its right hand. Seeing the incoming attack, I ducked to avoid it. Seeing what happened, Grandfather Park Dalbong shouted at me to leave because this zombie is not an ordinary monster. 
I reassured Grandfather Park Dalbong not to worry because I will be fine and asked them to go first because my motorcycle is only enough for two people. They became very worried, especially because the arrival of new zombies who heard the sound of the fight happening here made their numbers increase. Worried, Grandfather Young Young Chun asked if there was another way. Grandfather Park Dalbong also apologized because if his waist wasn't hurting, he could have joined in this fight. I started to ponder as I spun my chain around. The number of zombies was greater than I had anticipated. I even doubted if I could defeat these zombies. In the midst of this difficulty, a message window appeared, stating that a master with great abilities liked me and I could learn skills from them. Upon seeing this message, I smiled. Then the zombies started approaching and attacking me. The elders who saw my current situation shouted my name out of concern. When the zombies were about to touch me, I activated my skill. I then jumped high and used one of the techniques from the Hoseon Heavenly Demon Martial Art, Energy Wrap, from 8 Josean Province on your feet, Josean Rainer. I attacked the mutant zombie with a powerful stomp that even destroyed the ground around me and threw the zombies nearby due to the pressure of my stomp. The elders were shocked to see what happened. I couldn't help but smile happily because of the message window that appeared in front of me. The message in front of me stated that I had learned a new skill, Josean Heavenly Demon Martial Art. And also the message said that I had opened the first door of the Josean Heavenly Demon Martial Art. The greatest martial artist in the world is the strongest master in history. The Heavenly Demon has traveled across all lands in China and eventually arrived at his hometown, Joseon. The heavenly demon who had returned to his village at that time received energy from Joseon to enhance his self-defense abilities, and eventually he was able to master the history absolute skill. The skill itself is called Joseon Heavenly Demon Martial Art. As a result of the attack from my new skill, the floor in this room was destroyed, leaving large cracks in the ground. The two elders who witnessed this incident were left speechless and shocked. Grandfather Dalbong did not understand how I could use the Joseon Heavenly Demon Martial Art. Shortly after, a message window appeared in front of me stating that I had acquired a new passive skill, Joseon Heavenly Heart Control. The message window then mentioned that the passive effect of Joseon Heavenly Heart Control had merged into my blood, and I was now able to sense mana. I was confused when I saw this message and entered it. While I was still puzzled, a new status window appeared showing my name, HP, MP, and all the skills I possessed. Looking at this new status window, I became even more confused. Is this a game or what? I thought to myself. Then I realized something. I noticed that my hands were glowing slightly. I thought that this might be what the message window meant by mana. My body now feels much lighter. Is this what they meant by merging with flesh and blood? I had suspected that saving Grandpa Park Dalbong, despite being very dangerous, was the right choice. Yoseon Heavenly Demon Heart Control is truly a skill that I really need. I now leave the room to leave this place, seeing the two elders waiting on the motorcycle. I thought they had already left. Since I'm done here, I invite them to return together. As I was about to leave, the zombie mutant rose again with its severely damaged body and growled towards me. The zombie mutant turned out to still be alive. It seems that its power in dreams and reality is still the same. In that case, I prepare my chain weapon again. I say to the zombie mutant, maybe we should just finish our fight here. I swing my chain weapon around, ready to fight. The zombie mutant throws a punch towards me. I jump to dodge it. The ground where I was standing before crumbles, leaving a large crack due to the zombie mutant's punch. Both elders who saw it screamed and called my name out of concern. I said that I was fine and asked them to leave first. I continued to say that I would catch up with them. They were very hesitant to leave me. I asked them if they knew where my house was because if they went there, they would meet Professor Choi Naya Naya. Grandfather Yung Yung Chun didn't know what else he could say. He cursed in his heart. He also realized that his old body would only hold me back in the fight. Grandfather Yung Yung Chun now pulled the motorcycle throttle and started to leave from here. He shouted that I had to come back alive. Seeing them leave, I spun my chain and ran towards the zombie mutant I was facing. The zombie mutant roared. 
I then swung my chain and attacked the head of the zombie mutant. The zombie mutant that received my attack roared in anger. The zombie mutant then caught my chain and broke my iron chain. I cursed at it for breaking my chain. How dare it break my chain? I then jumped and delivered a knee strike to the face of the zombie mutant. The zombie mutant whimpered in pain while holding its face. I then took my broken chain and rolled the iron chains in my hands. I asked the zombie mutant if it knew the punishment for someone who damages other people's belongings. With a frustrated smile, I called the zombie mutant a bastard and told it to get ready because I was going to beat it up. The zombie mutant, hearing my threat, looked scared. In the evening at Shin Jerim's house, Professor Choi Naya is currently smoking in the living room. He exhales the cigarette smoke and mentions Jerem's name in his mind because he is anxious. Shortly after, the sound of a motorcycle approaching the house can be heard. Professor Choi Naya, who hears the sound of the motorcycle, stands up from the sofa and runs to greet Jerem. He opens the door, and with a happy expression on his face, he assumes that Jerem has returned safely, so he calls Jerem's name. However, it is not Jerem who is riding the motorcycle. Professor Choi Naya is surprised to see Young Young Chun and Park Dalbong. Young Young Chun then says that Jerem said, if they come to Jerem's house, they will meet Professor Choi. Professor Choi Naya is happy to hear that they have met Jerem. Professor Choi Naya says that Jerem said he wants to save both of them, and immediately ran away. Professor Choi Naya then asks Young Young Chun and Park Dalbong about Jerem's whereabouts. Professor Choi Naya grumbles that he will scold Jairam so that he learns his lesson. Jung Young Chun, who opens his mouth to answer Professor Choi Naya's question, closes it because he is unsure about how to answer. After composing himself, he answers that Jairam is still in the village. Professor Choi Naya, who hears this, looks confused and doesn't understand what Jung Young Chun is saying. Jung Young Chun continues, saying that Jairam insists on saving them, including their parents and stays there to fight the zombies alone. Hearing Jung Young Chun's story, Professor Choi Naya looks very worried. Using the coiled chain in my hand, I wielded it like a boxing glove and struck the mutant zombie on its left cheek. The zombie mutant was pushed backward. Taking advantage of the current momentum, I delivered a series of punches to its stomach and chest. Continuing to utilize the momentum, I leaped and performed a roundhouse kick to the zombie mutant's chin. The zombie mutant finally fell to the ground. I told the zombie mutant that it made a good punching bag. I was still annoyed because it had damaged my chain. However, thanks to that zombie mutant, I had become accustomed to using mana. The zombie mutant sat there groaning in pain. I then said that as a gesture of gratitude, I would let it go without beating it to a pulp. However, the zombie mutant growled and lunged at me. I gathered all my mana and unleashed it all at once with my punch. With my strong fist attack, the entire middle section of the zombie mutant's body was completely destroyed. The zombie mutant, now split in half and missing its middle section, was finally dead. I finally breathed a sigh of relief. I then noticed that the magic stone on the zombie mutant's forehead had come loose and fallen to the ground. I picked up the magic stone and was puzzled because I didn't know what kind of magic stone it was. Shortly after, a message window suddenly appeared, stating that it was a red magic stone. The message window explained that the magic stone was used to accelerate level advancement, and when used, the user's level would increase. As I read this message window, I could only feel confusion. Inside my house, the sound of the TV can be heard. On the TV, it is currently broadcasting news that the Ministry of National Defense has announced a national disaster. Currently, an unknown large-scale disaster is spreading throughout the country, and everyone is being urged to stay safely at home. Professor Choi Naye, Grandfather Yung Yung Chun, and Grandfather Park Dalbong, who were watching TV, are now feeling anxious. Suddenly, Grandfather Park Dalbong feels the presence of someone from outside. From the front door, I ask if there is anyone inside the house and state that I have returned. Seeing everyone here looking safe, I am grateful. However, Professor Choi Naya scolds me and asks what I am worried about and if I have been bitten by a zombie or not. I try to calm Professor Choi Naya down and say that, of course, I am fine. Suddenly, 
Grandfather Park Dalbong pats my back and says that he's proud of me for returning safely. Grandfather Yung Yung Chun then praises me for being a good young person because I tried to save these two people. He says that I have worked hard and thanks me. I feel embarrassed and say that it is nothing. Then a message window appears and says that an expert has liked me and I am allowed to inherit their skill. The message window then says that I can inherit the skill wooden architecture. F. Seeing that message, I feel happy. I then activate the skill transmission. As usual, the circle that looks like a magic circle that only I can see appears. And then, a message window appears saying that I have successfully inherited the skill Wooden Architecture, F. The message window also explains that with this skill, I can use mana to build structures or buildings out of wood. Grandfather Park Dalbong now says that he wants to ask me something. He asks how I learned the Heavenly Demon martial arts because he never taught me that martial art before. I replied and said that it is my skill. I now say that I will show them that skill here. Grandfather Park Dalbong, who is listening to me, asks Grandfather Yung Yung Chun what I want to show them, and if I just said ski. Grandfather Yung Yung Chun says that I just said suki, and asks if Grandfather Park Dalbong is deaf. Skill, huh? He surely doesn't mean the skill from the game, right? Professor Choi Naya thinks. I then activate the skill Wooden Architecture. Shortly after, the ground shakes and makes them panic. Grandfather Park Dalbong asks if there is an earthquake happening right now. A moment later, a large wooden stake emerges from the ground near Grandfather Park Dalbong's feet. After that, more wooden stakes emerge from the ground. Those wooden stakes then form a fence surrounding my house, and a large wooden gate is built between the fence. Those who witness this event can only be shocked and speechless. Grandfather Yung Yung Chun approaches the wooden gate and touches it. He is surprised by the wood because even though he is an arborist, he has never seen that kind of wood before. He even realizes that the wood is very strong, as strong as metal. I am now explaining that the skill wooden architecture is a skill that I received from my grandfather, Yung Yung Chun. My grandfather, Yung Yung Chun, who heard this, could only be confused because he never taught or explained anything to me. I explained to him that it is my skill called transmission, a skill to pass on the abilities of others. However, my grandfather, Yung Yung Chun, still remained confused about what I meant. Upon hearing that, my grandfather, Park Dalbong, finally realized, where did I get the martial arts skill, Heavenly Demon? He then remembered his past. In the past, my grandfather, Park Dalbong, had many students to pass on the martial arts skill Heavenly Demon, but none of them passed the introductory stage, because the Heavenly Demon martial art can only be learned by geniuses. Gradually, my grandfather, Park Dalbong, began to despair, but then a little girl appeared before him and called him grandfather. The little girl, Park Iseo, who was five years old, was Park Dalbong's granddaughter. Park Iseo had a natural talent in martial arts and 18 years had passed. With her natural talent and rigorous training, Park Iseo became the next successor. However, the immense destructive power that I showed earlier not only affected Park Iseo, but even my grandfather, Park Dalbong, who is the current successor, couldn't use that power. My grandfather, Park Dalbong, looked at me with a serious face and thought that I am a genius, an amazing genius who will save the world. A few moments later, suddenly a message window appeared. The message window stated that my mana had run out due to excessive usage. Suddenly I felt extremely exhausted. My vision started to blur and I began to lose my balance while standing. Unable to hold on to this fatigue, I started to lose consciousness and fell. Just as my consciousness was about to fade away, a message window appeared, stating to activate the forced rest mode to restore mana. Professor Choi Naya, Grandfather Park Dalbong and Grandfather Jung Yung Chun ran towards me out of concern. After what happened, I finally woke up from my sleep. I looked around and realized that I was currently in my room. As I sat on my bed, a message window appeared in front of me, stating that my mana had recovered. The message window then explained that mana could be restored by sleeping a lot. I started to think that skills don't always help and can be uncomfortable to use. If my mana runs out while fighting against zombies, I could become an easy target for them. 
While I was deep in thought, Professor Choi Naye appeared, bringing me a glass of drink. Seeing that I had woken up, he looked relieved and said that he was very worried. I apologized for feeling dizzy because I had used my skills too much. He said that he knew because I had made a tree grow from the ground like that. Professor Choi Naye handed me the glass of drink he brought earlier. I thanked him, and he then suggested that I should join him outside because the food should already be cooking. When I went out with Professor Choi Naya, I saw Grandfather Yung Yung Chun and Grandfather Park Dalbong sitting in the backyard, grilling meat. Outside the fence, I could hear the groans of zombies trying to get in. Seeing this situation, I was at a loss for words and confused. Grandfather Park Dalbong, upon seeing me arrive, seemed happy and said that the star of the night had finally awakened. I could only respond with a dry laugh. I then asked what all of this was for. Grandfather Park Dalbong laughed and replied that he had brought some pork from the refrigerator just for me. I asked if we were going to eat here because there were many zombies outside, and Grandfather Park Dalbong answered that it was because the outside was very beautiful. Grandfather Yung Yung Chun reassured me to just relax and sit with them because the wooden fence surrounding the house was stronger than iron. He then went on to explain that not only zombies, but even if a car crashed into it, there would be no problem. Grandfather Yung Yung Chun said that in his lifetime in the real estate world, he had never seen such a perfect barricade. He was very confident that this fence was very strong. Hearing Grandfather Yung Yung Chun's explanation, I felt relieved and started sitting with them. But still, having a barbecue party in a situation like this seemed a bit excessive, I said. Before I could finish my sentence, I heard the sound of a can being opened next to me. Professor Choi Naya was seen opening a can of beer next to me. He said that precisely because we were in a situation like this, we should relax a little. He offered me a can of beer. I accepted the can of beer. Professor Choi Naya was surprised that even though a national disaster was happening, they could still barbecue and eat meat. Grandfather Park Dalbong agreed with her and said that the object called Ski was amazing. Grandfather Yung Yung Chun, who overheard Grandfather Park Dalbong's words, tried to correct him and said that it was not Ski, but Suki. He then protested to Grandfather Park Dalbong because only he was drinking cola. Seeing this lively atmosphere, I began to think. The current situation is different, very different from my 99 nightmares. In my nightmares, zombies filled the entire world and every day truly felt like hell. Seeing them chatting happily, I smiled. I felt like I was in a healing camp right now. Somewhere, there is a line of soldiers currently showering a horde of attacking zombies. A soldier who appears to be a leader of this team is currently speaking into the radio he is holding. He identifies themselves as the Red Squirrels and asks the team to respond to his call. He then reports that the first line of defense is almost breached and requests for quick reinforcements as a large-scale zombie attack is approaching rapidly. He then reports that the number of zombies is likely more than a thousand, and the target of these zombies is the artisan village. Among the crowd of thousands of zombies, a mutant monster can be seen, resembling a combination of wild animals with giant-sized human body parts. The mutant monster has multiple legs and a large mouth with a big and extremely long tongue. And just like the previous mutant zombies, there is a magic stone attached to the monster's forehead. If these zombies manage to approach the craftsman village, there is no doubt that the village will be in a very big trouble at seven in the morning. On this bright morning, I, who was sound asleep on the main living room sofa, woke up because a mission window appeared in front of me. The mission window stated that I had completed a hidden mission to rescue three professors on the first night of the incident. And as a reward, I was given the skill Analysis F. I then read the description of the skill. It said that I could use mana to obtain information about a target. I was surprised to find out that I had a hidden mission, and more importantly, I gained a new skill. Hearing a sound from outside, I went out and saw Grandpa Park Dalbong and Grandpa Young Young Chun doing warm up exercises and Professor Choi Naya sitting and smoking. Since I just acquired a new skill, I thought of trying to use it. Their information appeared. However, because the level of the analysis skill was still not enough, there were still some information that didn't show up. Among all the information, 
one caught my attention, and that was the information that they were all unrated humans. I didn't understand why humans had ratings. I was sure that these ratings were not the same as the ones during exams. Upon comparing wooden architecture with Joseon Heavenly Demon martial art, it feels somewhat disappointing. I looked inside the house and then appeared a window analyzing the items I saw such as a TV and a sofa. I was surprised because even the items also have ratings. I took out the magic stone that I obtained from the previous mutant zombie. I thought that maybe this magic stone could be used for items as well. Seeing me holding this magic stone, Professor Choi Naye asked me why I looked at this magic stone as a very valuable treasure. I said that I got this magic stone from the city and thought that this magic stone is similar to a catalyst item. Professor Choi Naye, upon hearing my answer, asked if I meant that as a catalyst item like in games. I replied that what he said was almost similar, but this magic stone is more like an experience potion. I then explained that with this magic stone, we can strengthen objects or people using this magic stone. Upon hearing my explanation, Professor Choi Naya asked why I only looked at this magic stone and did not use it. I am still thinking about what to use it for. Besides, I still do not know the benefits of increasing someone's or an item's rating, so I have to find out. Because I wanted to try this magic stone, I said that I would go out for a walk for a while. Professor Choi Naya scolded me for not even a day since I fainted, and now I dared to go out. I said that there was something I needed to make sure of. I then took my helmet, put it on, rode my motorcycle, and went to the craftsman village. On a route used to reach the craftsman village, a group of soldiers can be seen blocking the road using a Tiger II tank and four military armored vehicles. A soldier who appears to be the leader thinks that there is a new entity that has defeated the first blockade. He then thinks that if he can capture it alive, he will be able to get promoted. The leader of the soldiers then orders his subordinates to capture the black monster alive and asks if his subordinates understand. The subordinates respond that they understand and begin to prepare. A few moments later, the zombies start to appear. One of the soldier subordinates reports that the zombies have emerged from all directions. The leader of the soldiers then orders all his subordinates to attack the zombies with all their ammunition. He says that he wants them to show the zombies the sensation of being shot by their rifles. The soldiers then rain bullets down on the zombies. Some soldiers even use mortars to explode the zombies. The leader laughs arrogantly as he sees the zombies falling due to the bullet rain fired by his subordinates. However, as he is about to give an order, the area where the leader is located is covered by a shadow. Curious about what is blocking the light, the leader looks up. He is shocked to see a mutant zombie, even larger than their armored vehicles, descending from the sky. The mutant zombie has four legs and a very large mouth. The mutant zombie lands on the armored vehicle driven by the leader of the soldiers and kills the leader because he was standing on top of the vehicle. The enraged soldiers opened fire on the mutant zombies with their rifles. Seeing that their bullets were ineffective against the mutants, someone ordered the tank to aim at the mutants. However, to their surprise, the mutant zombies were incredibly fast. They quickly pushed aside the armored vehicles and the tank as if they were toys. The soldiers couldn't believe what they were witnessing. One soldier suggested that they should quickly protect the second blockade and sacrifice their lives to save others. However, that soldier was struck from behind by a Jerem-like zombie mutant. Not only that, but there were also many of them. On the other side, there were other mutant zombies that resembled lizards. They had extremely long tongues and used them to attack and pull the soldiers. The captured soldiers pleaded for help to be saved from the clutches of the mutant zombies. As I was fighting against the zombies, I heard a scream. I went towards the direction of the scream. Seeing the soldiers annihilated, I cursed in my heart. They had already reached the second blockade. They were incredibly fast. I began to feel the difference between my nightmares and the real world. Even the number of zombie variants in my dreams had increased from five to ten. I looked towards the four-legged monster mutant with a massive mouth as its body. It had even reached this far. Seeing it, I started to feel anxious. The monster mutant was now approaching the overturned tank, which it had pushed and bitten as if it were a snack. The tank soon exploded in front of the monster mutant. However, 
Even the explosion didn't harm the monster mutant at all. It began to roar. Upon seeing the gemstone on her forehead, I activated the analysis skill. After examining what was written, I concluded that today's rest time had come to an end. I am currently riding my motorcycle on the road. The number of zombies is around 5,000 or more. Josie and Rainer is indeed powerful but uses too much mana. That's why I have no other choice but to use it. Every summer, the Village of Artisans holds a fireworks festival for tourists. The festival should be held tonight, so there should be some left behind. I arrived at the river that is my destination. There is a docked ship by the river. My current goal is the fireworks inside this ship. I boarded the ship and started heading towards the location of the fireworks. I know where the fireworks are because I have used them many times in my dreams. I finally found the fireworks I was looking for. As I suspected, the fireworks were not damaged at all. With a little repair, I can use them immediately. However, I don't know if I will use them now. I am now returning to the village. While observing the zombies, I took out a spray and started using it on my entire body. After I was sure that this was enough to change my scent. After that, I took out my iron chain and magic stone and placed them on the floor. I then used the analysis skill on my iron chain. An analysis window appeared, stating that this is an old iron chain with no value. In order to fight against a large horde of zombies, it is better for me to strengthen my weapon. That is my plan, but I don't even know how to use this magic stone. With a confused expression, I can only observe this magic stone. I wonder if I just need to place the magic stone. When I bring the magic stone closer to my iron chain, a message window appears saying that this item can be strengthened and asks if I want to strengthen it or not. Without hesitation, I choose yes. My iron chain starts to shine. Shortly after, a message window appears saying that the item has been successfully strengthened and my iron chain has transformed. The iron chain now looks brand new and even reconnected as it was before being severed by the mutant zombie. This iron chain even has different analysis results now. It is now called Intact Chain with a rank F. Not only that, Intact Chain even provides a 15% increase in mana and has the special ability of separation, F. I am impressed by my new weapon. When I hold my iron chain, I can even feel the mana entering my weapon. I then try the special ability of Intact Chain, Separation. My iron chain separates and wraps itself around my hand as I usually wear it. I think this magic stone is truly amazing. Just when I was feeling happy, suddenly I feel a tremor. Finally, they have arrived. A group of zombies and various monsters start appearing, taking over the village. This is the moment to unleash the fireworks. I took out a remote control and pressed the button on it. The fireworks on the ship began to shoot up and explode in the sky. The attention of the zombies was diverted by the fireworks. I then jumped onto the humanoid zombie variant and strangled it using my chain. With my strength, I decapitated the humanoid zombie variant with my chain. The decapitated head of the humanoid zombie variant was thrown upwards. Two lizard-like zombie variants who noticed my presence attacked by extending their tongues. I reacted by activating the wooden construction skill and blocking the tongue attacks of the lizard-like zombie variants. I then swung my chain and crushed the heads of the two lizard-like zombie variants with my swing. On the ground now lay three magic stones from the three zombie variants I had just defeated. I immediately used all of them to upgrade my chain weapon. Soon, a message window appeared stating that the enhancement was successful and the intact chain had now become intact chain plus three. With my weapon growing stronger, I ordered the zombies to advance because I would kill them all. The large, spider-like zombie variant with four legs and a mouth as a body finally arrived at the ship that had fired the fireworks earlier. The spider-like zombie variant crashed into the ship and easily sank it. Suddenly, the zombie variant caught a whiff of something. The spider-like zombie variant then tracked the scent and leaped very high towards the source of the smell. The zombie spider variant landed and found me devouring the zombies. Finally, this monster arrived, the perfect timing. Upon hearing my words, the zombie spider variant let out a roar. I then took out the magic stone and used it on my intact iron chain. The message window appeared, stating that the intact iron chain plus five had reached its strengthening limit 
and asked if I wanted to reinforce it. Without hesitation, I answered yes. The message window reappeared, confirming that the reinforcement was successful and that I had gained a new special ability, Chain of Flames, E, and Fireworks, E. With the fiery iron chain in my hand, I told the zombie spider variant that the festival had just begun. In a slightly luxurious house, there sat a professor on his sofa in his own room, reading a book about albino animals. The professor's name was Sebastian Kim. He was a 65-year-old ethology professor. On his lap, there stood an albino flying squirrel named Hanul. Shortly after, a crow appeared and delivered a message tied to its leg to Professor Sebastian Kim. Professor Sebastian Kim was delighted because one of his pets, Mong Mong, had returned. Professor Sebastian Kim praised Mong Mong for doing his task well and retrieving the message tied to his leg. Professor Sebastian Kim opened the message and read it. The message stated, The village is currently being flooded by zombies and they are causing havoc there. You should also be careful. Stay alive and let's meet again. Thank you for contacting me. Upon reading the message, Professor Sebastian Kim felt relieved knowing that the sender was still alive. He then remembered the members of the rare animal conservation community. He wondered if they were safe from the zombie attacks. Professor Sebastian Kim hoped that they were all fine. Suddenly in the distance, fireworks could be seen. Seeing the fireworks, Professor Sebastian Kim speculated whether the zombies were playing with fireworks. Hanul crawled onto Professor Sebastian Kim's thigh to get his attention. Professor Sebastian Kim asked what was happening, and Hanul pointed towards the fireworks. With a disbelieving expression, Professor Sebastian Kim asked if Hanul was telling him to go to hell. Upon hearing Professor Sebastian Kim's question, Hanul nodded vigorously. While watching the fireworks still exploding in the sky, Professor Sebastian Kim was reminded of that day. When Professor Sebastian Kim was in the forest, he saw Hanul on top of a tree. Hanul then jumped and floated towards Professor Sebastian Kim, landing on his shoulder. Hanul then tried to warn him about something. When Professor Sebastian Kim went in the direction that Hanul pointed, he saw a group of people being attacked by zombies. Professor Sebastian Kim was shocked to witness this incident. Professor Sebastian Kim thought that if it weren't for Hanul's warning, he might have died on the first day of this incident. Professor Sebastian Kim felt certain that if it weren't for Hanul, he wouldn't be here now. Professor Sebastian Kim decided to trust Hanul's instincts once again. I, who am currently facing four-legged spider zombie variants, dodged to the left as the monster extended its neck and lunged towards me. I then launched a punch attack using my chain fist covered in flames. The zombie variant spider's neck that received my blow now had a large hole in it. But despite receiving such an attack, the spider zombie variant seemed to have suffered no damage at all. The spider zombie variant now began to take deep breaths. Seeing this pattern, I was certain that it was a poisonous spider web. From the mouth of the spider zombie variant, spider webs spread in all directions. I started to think, could this be because of the skill analysis? Because somehow I understood how to use the new weapon. I then injected mana into the iron chain wrapped around my hand, covered in flames. Then a message window appeared, stating that the mana injection had reached its limit. Finally, I activated the special ability of the intact iron chain fireworks flame fist. Flames burst out from my fist like a flamethrower weapon. The eruption of fire also burned the webs spun by the spider variant zombies. Since ancient times, the power of fire that burns everything has been a natural enemy of poison. The fires began to spread and started to engulf the spider variant zombies. I told the spider variant zombies that they didn't know who they were messing with. The spider variant zombies roared and groaned in pain. They threw themselves to the ground to extinguish the fire burning their bodies. After the fires were extinguished, the spider variant zombies seemed to want to escape. But before that, they looked in my direction. It might just be my imagination, but I felt like the zombie had just said that they would definitely kill me. The zombie variant growled and called all the zombies around. I said that apparently they still wanted to fight. I then combined my metal chains and spun them around. I told them they could do whatever they wanted because I would play with them. With my current strength, 
Even just one swing of my metal chain could kill several ordinary zombies attacking me. The spider variant zombie jumped high and landed while trying to step on me. But I dodged by jumping back and threw my metal chain to tie both legs of the spider variant zombie. I pulled the chain and severed both legs of the spider variant zombie. I told them they were nothing to me while cursing them. The spider variant zombie finally howled in pain and eventually collapsed to the ground. Professor Sebastian Kim, who had just arrived in the village, was surprised because he hadn't seen any zombies despite being in the village. Suddenly, there was a loud explosion in the distance. Professor Sebastian Kim was convinced that something was happening there. Han Yul, upon hearing Professor Sebastian Kim's words, nodded in agreement. Professor Sebastian Kim thought to himself that no matter how you hear it, only an explosion would make such a sound. He started running towards the sound of the explosion. Professor Sebastian Kim thought that the explosion might have been caused by the soldiers. When Professor Sebastian Kim arrived, he saw me standing on top of the bodies of spider variant zombies. He then asked me if I was a soldier. Upon hearing the voice, I recognized it and called out Professor Sebastian Kim's name. Professor Sebastian Kim, upon seeing me, was shocked and asked if I was the one who did all this. I replied that it was true and that I was the one who had fought all the zombies here. I then asked Professor Sebastian Kim why he was here. Professor Sebastian Kim said to wait and asked if not only had I defeated the zombies here, but I had also defeated the big monster over there. He truly couldn't believe it and asked how this could have happened. Before I could answer, Hanul suddenly chirped and pointed towards something. Professor Sebastian Kim asked what was going on and looked in the direction that Hanul was pointing. Professor Sebastian Kim was shocked and screamed. Curious about what Professor Sebastian Kim was seeing, I looked in the direction he was staring at. In the sky, a falling meteor could be seen. I was also shocked and panicked. I quickly made my way to my motorcycle and urged Professor Sebastian Kim to quickly get on. I revved the engine, and we tried to escape. I have never seen this event before in my dreams. The meteor fell shortly after in a certain place. Just the impact of the meteor alone caused a very strong shock. As a result of the shock, my motorcycle lost balance, and I crashed into an electric pole and fell down. Then the zombies affected by the meteor started to rise. The group of zombies now began to walk towards me. I prepared my iron chain to get ready for a fight. Before fighting, I used the skill Analysis F on those zombies. However, the result of the analysis only showed damaged texts. I have never seen zombies like this in my dreams. I then tried to attack one of the zombies with my iron chain, but my physical attack had no effect on the zombie, and even the zombie had defense against fire. Then, one of the zombies came from behind to attack. I swung my iron chain to attack and split the right hand of the zombie. In an instant, the hand I cut off from the zombie regenerated. As I suspected, if I attacked them in this purple area, they would continue to regenerate. The zombies started to come towards us. I heard the chirping of Hanul and Professor Sebastian Kim, who had just regained consciousness after the previous accident. Professor Sebastian Kim, who was holding his head in pain, asked what was happening here. Since I have obtained all the magic stones, for now, we should go back. I tried to help Professor Sebastian Kim stand up and said that the current situation is quite serious and we should go to my house first. I carried Professor Sebastian Kim to assist him in walking to my house. After walking quite a distance, we finally arrived at my house. Professor Sebastian Kim, who saw the barricade around my house, asked if I was the one who made this barricade. I replied that it was true and asked if it was good. Professor Sebastian Kim gave me a thumbs up and said that it was fantastic. I then looked at the message window in front of this wooden gate. The message window stated that this wooden construction had a durability of 9, 10. Its durability had decreased, and I wondered if it was okay. I tried tapping one of the wooden stakes and felt confident that this barricade was still strong enough. Shortly after, a voice from inside asked if it was me who had arrived. I answered that I had come home. Grandfather Yung Yung Chun, Grandfather Park Dal Bong, and Professor Choi Naye came out to welcome me. I asked them if they were still on guard duty, and Grandfather Yung Yung Chun replied that they couldn't sleep since the fireworks and the strange green meteor appeared. 
Before Grandfather Yung Yung Chun finished his sentence, he saw the person who was with me. He looked happy and asked if it was really Su Chan. Grandfather Yung Yung Chun confirmed and asked Grandfather Yung Yung Chun to call him Sebastian Kim. Grandfather Yung Yung Chun laughed and said that he was relieved that the naughty child was still alive. In the midst of the conversation, I asked them to save their celebration for later because there was something I wanted to discuss about the green meteor earlier. We are all currently sitting and gathering in the TV room. After listening to my explanation, Professor Choi Naya said that this place has turned into a terrifying place. Grandfather Yung Young Chun is worried about the survivors because he believes their supplies are running low. Professor Sebastian Kim, upon hearing Grandfather Yung Young Chun's concerns, said that there is a solution to it. Grandfather Park Dalbong, upon hearing Professor Sebastian Kim scold him and telling him to use the Korean language, looked surprised because he was scolded. He continued his speech and asked if we remember his crow. Grandfather Park Dalbong, who remembers the crow, said that we can hang food on its feet and deliver it, which is enough for the surviving people to survive. The problem is that the crow is still at Professor Sebastian Kim's house, and it may be surrounded by zombies now. If we save the crow, it will reduce the time needed to save the village craftsmen. Grandfather Yung Yung Chun asked how we can save it because we cannot fly to avoid the zombies. I thought about trying to break through the zombies, but it would be lucky if I didn't die there. I need another way to break through. There are only four magic stones left after I used them to strengthen my weapon. I don't know how many magic stones are needed to awaken a special expert. This number can at least cover for one person and at most four people. In front of those who are looking for a way out of this problem, I said that I need their help. They are all now paying attention to me. Currently, we are all gathered in the yard of the house. In front of everyone, a message window appears stating that they can awaken by using the magic stone and asking if they want to awaken. Grandfather Park Dalbong looks surprised and asks if he is the only one who can see this writing. Professor Sebastian Kim, who also looks confused, answers that he can't believe it and he can see it too. The others also respond that they can see the same writing. I then clap my hands and explain that by using the stone, they can awaken and gain special abilities like mine. If I can make them all stronger with this magic stone, I am confident that we can overcome any future problems. Professor Sebastian Kim, who is examining the magic stone, remarks that the stone looks very valuable and asks if it's okay for him to accept it. I reply that it's okay and ask them to use it immediately. The stones they are holding now start to emit light. In front of Grandfather Park Dalbong, a message window appeared stating that the innate skill, Josean Heavenly Demon Martial Art, had been acquired. Grandfather Park Dalbong could feel something. He was sure that it was mana as I had mentioned before. Grandfather Park Dalbong then exerted his power throughout his body. The bandage wrapped around Grandfather Park Dalbong's abdomen came loose due to the pressure from Grandfather Park Dalbong's strength. He then struck the ground leaving cracks in the earth and also leaving imprints of his fists on the ground. He shouted that he felt filled with energy. Grandfather Park Dalbong then flexed his muscles. However, in the midst of all this, Grandfather Park Dalbong suddenly felt pain in his back again. He bent his back and groaned in pain. I asked Grandfather Park Dalbong if he was okay. Grandfather Park Dalbong felt sad because this magic stone could not solve his back problem. I then checked on Grandfather Young Young Chun. Grandfather Young Young Chun seemed to have acquired his innate skill, wooden construction. He was currently controlling wood and creating small, luxurious building miniatures, historical building miniatures, tall skyscraper miniatures, and even wooden warrior miniatures. I was slightly surprised to see what he could do with that skill. I then called Professor Choi Naya, but he didn't answer because he seemed busy with his thoughts. I called him again and finally he realized and asked if I had just called him. Professor Choi Naya said that this was very interesting because he could see everyone's emotions. In Professor Choi Naya's eyes, he could see the window of the emotional status of the people he saw. When he saw Grandfather Park Dalbong holding his back in pain, Professor saw the emotional state of Grandfather Park Dalbong experiencing embarrassment.
0.4, and sadness, 0.7. Then he looked towards me. With his skills, he saw that my emotions were experiencing happiness, 0.2, and embarrassment, 0.6. Professor Choi Naya said that I must have been very surprised. He then touched my cheek with his hand and used his innate skill, mental care, on me. My happiness emotion value, which started at 0.2, increased to 0.7, and the embarrassment value decreased from 0.6 to 0.2. I said that I felt better. Professor Choi Naya saw me looking enthusiastic and better, as if he had great hope for me, and he also seemed happy with his new skill, saying that this innate skill was very interesting. The village craftsman's skills do not have ranks. Only inherent skills that I feel their skills are not very useful to bring to actual places like battlefields. I thought that might be different. Professor Sebastian Kim suddenly shouted that he had just gotten an idea. He called me and said that he felt he had found the answer. He then confidently pointed to the sky. I, who saw it, did not understand at all what he meant. Professor Sebastian Kim then explained that we could not go by land because there were many monsters, as he thought trying to pass through the land in the current situation was very dangerous, even seemed like suicide. With the large number of abnormal monsters, he made a decision that had to be done as it should be, so we should go through the air. I, still confused, asked if he had just mentioned the sky. Park Hyun Sung found himself and his men surrounded by zombies feeling that they were more of a hindrance than protection. In a desperate move, he decided to sacrifice them as bait to escape. However, his plan backfired as he was once again pursued by the relentless zombies. Despite being captured and bitten, Park Hyun Sung was determined to seek revenge on Yairim. Transforming into a zombie himself, he vowed to fulfill his mission no matter the cost. Meanwhile, Yairim managed to create a diversion to flee returning to rescue Sung Hamin, who was still trapped. After freeing him, Sung Hamin, initially wary of Jerim's intentions, was relieved and grateful for the unexpected rescue. Jerim, sensing something amiss with Sung Hamin's mana skills, suspected lingering effects of shock and immediately provided mental care. Sung Hamin promptly instructed Jerim to vacate the premises, warning him that it was a den of murderers. He gestured towards the stack of boxes behind him, revealing that there were already over ten corpses inside. In an attempt to reassure Sung Hamin, Jerem explained that he was aware of the situation, which was why he had come to help. Jerem then handed a red crystal stone to Sung Hamin. Upon receiving it, Sung Hamin was taken aback when he realized it was the same red stone owned by the murderer Park Hyun Sung. However, after a moment, he noticed that the stone from Jerem did not emit the same ominous aura. Jerem disclosed that he had obtained the stone after defeating a zombie. Sung Hamin reached out for the stone, and as he took it from Yairim, a quest window appeared, indicating that he could awaken by using the magic stone. Feeling a surge of energy as he held the stone, Sung Hamin was surprised by the concept of awakening. After assisting Sung Hamin to his feet, Jairim inquired if he had acquired any new skills. Sung Hamin revealed that his initial skill involved cooking, with the ability to imbue food with special effects using mana. Jairim speculated that everyone would gain skills upon awakening, except for ordinary individuals. He considered this development a positive one, enabling them to make the most of transmission. Sung Hamin expressed his gratitude before they were formally introduced to each other. Yairim then instructed Sung Hamin to purchase groceries before they departed. Without delay, Sung Hamin promptly carried out the task of gathering the necessary items. Jairim, observing Sung Hamin's condition, felt it would be challenging to protect him. He then took out his inventory and meticulously arranged numerous stones in front of him. Deep in thought, Jairim focused on the stones. Realizing the need to utilize the stones, Jerem pondered on ways to increase his mana. A quest window suddenly appeared, presenting a list of skills that Jerem could enhance. Surprised by the possibility of upgrading his skills, Jerem believed that his current F-grade skills were already satisfactory. However, he decided to attempt an upgrade to grade E, anticipating the need for a significant amount of magic stones. After careful consideration, Jerem proceeded with the upgrade. 
The room was instantly filled with a powerful energy, and shortly after, a quest window confirmed the success of the upgrade. Yarim now possessed the ability to predict enemy movements. Following that, Sung Hameen arrived with the outcomes of his culinary endeavors, presenting a visually appealing display of dishes. Sung Hameen expressed that he had prepared nourishing food specifically for Jerim. Without hesitation, Jerim eagerly sampled the creations that Sung Hameen had crafted. With just one bite, Jerim was astounded by the delectable flavor of the Yajang Mion, skillfully cooked by the master chef. The food was so incredibly delicious that consuming it resulted in a 20% increase in all stats within a three-hour time frame. Ultimately, Yarim devoured the entire meal without leaving a single morsel behind. Expressing his satisfaction, Yarim promptly commended Sung Hamin with a thumbs up for his exceptional culinary skills. Subsequently, Yarim extended an invitation for Sung Hamin to depart from the premises. Yairim suggested utilizing an alternate exit, leading them to another door. Yairim proceeded to demolish the floor using his chain, revealing an underground tunnel that he had just created. Without further delay, both individuals descended through the tunnel. Sung Hamin had not anticipated traversing through a ditch during their journey. Suddenly, they were both startled by a powerful vibration reminiscent of an earthquake. The adjacent wall abruptly cracked, revealing a horrifying figure of a zombie. It was none other than Park Hyun Sung and his two companions, who had transformed into zombies. Jerem was taken aback by this sight, and pondered how they had managed to locate them. In an instant, Jerem urgently instructed Sung Hamin to retreat, while he activated his analysis skill to gather information about their enemy. Following that, Yairim employed the mental care skill on Sung Hamin, advising him to return to the mart due to concerns about potential harm from his iron chain. Jairim was approached by three zombies who wasted no time in attacking him. However, he swiftly dodged the attack with a quick movement. Without hesitation, Jairim grabbed his iron chain and delivered a powerful blow to one of the zombies, sending it flying far away. The three zombies tumbled down, causing the wall behind them to collapse. Park Hyun Sung's men found themselves unable to combat Jairim, who possessed superhuman abilities. Realizing that they needed to find a way to defeat Jairim, they attempted a sneak attack from behind. However, Jairim quickly caught on and swiftly retaliated, striking all three of them. Park Hyun Sung was taken aback when Jairim accurately predicted his movements. Frustrated with his incompetent men, Park Yun Sung mercilessly executed them both. Subsequently, Park Yun Sung transformed into a terrifying figure with one eye and razor sharp teeth. Utilizing his fear inducing abilities, Park Yun Sung tried to intimidate Yerim. Jerim, feeling a sense of deja vu, likened the situation to the giving tree. When the fear reached its peak, Jerim unleashed his own fear skill. Park Yun Sung was shocked by Jerim's counter move and attempted to attack only to have Yerim dodge and strike back, sending his enemy flying. In agony, Park Hyun Sung recoiled as Yerim took advantage of the moment and severed his right arm. Screaming in pain, Park Hyun Sung fled at an incredible speed, leaving his severed arm behind. Within it, a bright light emanated, prompting Yerim to retrieve an orange magic stone. Yerim turned around to search for Sung Hamin, calling out to him to come out of hiding as his task was completed. Sung Hamin emerged from behind the rock, his face displaying panic due to the loud noise he had heard earlier. Yerim promptly reassured him, informing him that the monster had fled and would not return anytime soon. Sung Hamin recognized that it was Park Hun Sung who had transformed into the monster, surprised by Jairim's strength in defeating him. Jairim then proposed they continue their journey as they still had other objectives to achieve. After traversing the tunnel road, they reached a drainage hole leading to the surface. Jairim proceeded to inspect the area before guiding Sung Hamin out of the hole next to a large house. Sung Hamin felt uneasy as the surroundings appeared normal, to which Jairim explained that it was due to the special abilities possessed by the residents of the neighboring mansion. Without delay, Jairim called out for the professor residing in the house. Shortly after, a stout man in undergarments greeted Jairim. The professor was taken aback to see the owner of the nearby Chinese restaurant accompanying Jerim. 
Sung Haman clarified that Jerem had come to his rescue. The professor chuckled, remarking on the coincidence of encountering someone else saved by Jerem once again. Jerem requested permission from Professor Ryu to stay at his house due to being targeted by zombies. Professor Ryu was puzzled by this revelation and questioned why Jerem was a target. Jerem explained that it was because he had killed many zombies. Professor Ryu agreed to let Jerem stay, and they shook hands. Sung Haman expressed his gratitude to Jerem for his actions. A quest window appeared, indicating that the expert had approved of Jerem, and a skill would be sent to him. Jerem then asked Sung Hamin for a cocktail drink. Upon entering Professor Ryu's house, Jerem quickly made a special cocktail that boosted stamina by 10% for 10 minutes. He drank it in one gulp. Meanwhile, Park Hyun Sung was angered by Jerem's actions, which had caused him to lose a hand. He vowed to seek revenge against Jerem. Suddenly, a powerful energy approached, and Park Hyun Sung felt overwhelmed by the presence of a figure stronger than anyone in the area. The zombies and monsters bowed in respect to the female zombie leader, Park Yizio, the 24th master of the Joseon Heavenly Martial Arts Dojo. Park Yiseo, a woman who has always stood up against injustice since childhood. When she was just five years old, she bravely confronted one of the bullies in kindergarten, Kim Cheolsu. By the time she turned six, she had managed to bring peace to Cheolsu. When her grandfather asked about her future plans, Park Yi Seo confidently stated that she would protect everyone because she believed that everyone deserves happiness. This belief was firmly rooted in her by the age of seven. As she was appointed as the master of the martial arts dojo, she declared to her juniors that she would lead a life of righteousness as a martial arts master. By the age of 17, Park Yaseo had wholeheartedly embraced this conviction. One day she rescued an elderly man from thugs and welcomed him into her martial arts group, making him the youngest member. A year later, the man followed Park Yaseo's example and dedicated himself to helping the oppressed, just like she did. It was a proud moment for Park Yiseo to witness someone she had saved go on to save others. As time passes, an increasing number of individuals admire Park Yinseo for her compassionate nature in assisting others. Park Yinseo's world was brimming with joy and mirth, creating a truly beautiful moment for her. Despite the world descending into chaos, Park Yinseo remained steadfast in her beliefs. She, along with her students, persisted in their efforts to combat the monsters until Park Yin Seo reached her breaking point and could do no more. When a monstrous figure threatened to strike her, a man swiftly shielded Park Yin Seo, taking the blow intended for her. Witnessing this scene was utterly heart-wrenching for Park Yin Seo, prompting her to let out a hysterical scream. Ultimately, Park Yin Seo vanquished the monster, but tragically she was unable to save the man in time. This incident marked the first time Park Yin Seo realized the importance of mutual protection. Within the heavenly martial arts dojo temple of Joseon, the residents sheltered by Park Yin Seo could be seen. Despite feeling that they had rescued many individuals, the loss of numerous lives weighed heavily on the woman. Gazing sadly at the freshly dug graves, Park Yin Seo hoped that the departed souls had found peace. During the night, Park Yin Seo gazed at the luminous moon above, determined to rid the village of all monsters that night. However, her attention was soon drawn to a peculiar sight, a bright light in the sky that left them all bewildered. Before long, a massive object hurtled towards them, prompting her students to swiftly shield Park Yin Seo from the impending danger. There was a massive explosion that could be seen throughout the village. Park Yin Seo winced in pain and was shocked to see her colleagues transformed into monsters. Soon after, she felt something strange happening to her body. She screamed loudly as a claw emerged from behind her back and two horns sprouted from her head. A loud voice inside her head urged her to kill. This incident shaped Park Yin Seo into what she is today. She is still highly praised, with some even willing to sacrifice themselves to make her perfect. Jerim found himself walking among monsters who suddenly fell silent. A quest window appeared, revealing that the skill user Park Hyun Sung had died. Jerim sensed that something unusual was about to happen. Shortly after, an emergency mission appeared with a five-hour time limit to prevent the queen's perfect transformation. 
Professor Kim approached Yerim and informed him that Yisio had turned into a monster. Yerim was taken aback by the news, as he never expected the granddaughter of the old man Dalbong to become a monster. He pondered over what had truly transpired. Professor Kim informed Mong Mong to relay the message to Dalbong's father that he should already be aware of the situation. Shortly after, Park Dalbong rushed towards them in a state of panic, questioning Professor Kim about Park Yin Seo's whereabouts. Professor Kim, with a hesitant voice, mentioned that Park Yin Seo might be in the middle of the purple ground. Without hesitation, Park Dalbong sprinted towards the direction indicated by Professor Kim. Yerim instructed Professor Kim to inform everyone about the situation and advised them to wait patiently due to the high level of danger. Subsequently, Yerim caught up with Dalbong's father. Upon arrival, they were astonished to witness a gigantic monster towering over the buildings. Yerim promptly utilized his analysis skill to gather information about the monster, revealing that it was Park Yin Seo, the offspring of a queen, absorbing energy through her glands. If she hatched, she would be unable to revert to human form. Jerim urgently suggested to Dalbong's father that they needed to sever the glands to save Yin Seo. Acting swiftly, Jerim attempted to cut the glands with his iron chain, but the attack proved ineffective due to Yin Seo's high resistance. Jerim's expression turned to one of disbelief as he realized the formidable strength of the monster's body. Park Dalbong took decisive action, mustering all his strength. He expressed his seriousness in utilizing his power even if it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. With determination, Park Dalbong swiftly flew towards the monster, clenching his fist to annihilate its glands. Jairam's analysis revealed that Park Dalbong's power had a similar effect to an active ability. As a result of Park Dalbong's attack, the seedling's endurance dwindled to 88%. Exhausted from exerting such immense power, Park Dalbong descended, visibly breathless. He remarked that it would be challenging for Jerim to learn the technique merely by observing it once. However, Jerim disagreed, confident in his ability to confront the monster. Jerim then activated his acoustic skill and forcefully destroyed the monster's gland. This attack further reduced the seedling's resistance to 74%. Park Dalbong was astonished by Jerim's unexpected display as he had not anticipated that Jerim could also employ an internal approach after witnessing it only once. According to Jerim, executing such a technique was relatively easy. He continued to launch repeated attacks, causing the seedling's resistance to plummet to 47%. A quest window appeared, notifying Jerim that the emergency mission had been accomplished and granting him the opportunity to seize control of the area. This revelation left Jerim perplexed unsure of what exactly was meant by having one chance to take control. Instantly, the monster's shell shattered, revealing Park yin -so's figure. Simultaneously, a quest window popped up, indicating that the queen's transformation had become unstable. Jerem received an emergency mission, instructing him to conquer the queen. Park yin -so locked eyes with Jerem, and the quest window warned of a high-ranking enemy targeting him. Both individuals appeared visibly alarmed by the situation. Jerim quickly grabbed Dalbong's old man's hand, urging him to run for safety. Concerned that the man would be captured, Jerim instructed Park Dalbong to leave first while he stayed behind to deal with Park Yin Seo. Facing Park Yin Seo head on, Jerim promptly activated his prediction skill. He launched an attack with his iron chain and attempted to induce fear, only to have the effect nullified due to the opponent's high rank. Undeterred, Jerem unleashed his acoustic and blue flame dragon skills, but Park Yin Seo effortlessly withstood the assault without needing to defend herself. In a swift and powerful counterattack, Park Yin Seo landed a punch that sent Jerem flying backward. As Park Yin Seo advanced towards him, Jerem used his wooden construction skill to ensnare her in a piece of wood, creating an opportunity for his escape. However, Park Yin Seo quickly broke free from the wooden trap and pursued Jerem. Despite the challenging situation, Jerem remained determined to emerge victorious against Park Yin Seo. Jerem sprinted towards his comrades who awaited him at the gate. Simultaneously, he swiftly activated the Proclamation Area skill, asserting control over the designated area. The quest window appeared, 
prompting Jairim to select one of the fighters. Knowing he couldn't allow old man Dalbong to face Yinseo, Jairim made the decision to personally engage in combat against Park Yinseo. Without hesitation, Yarim unleashed his immense power, enveloping his body in energy. Witnessing this, Park Dalbong was left astounded, acknowledging Jairim's formidable strength. Jairim then instructed the others to retreat from the location, as he prepared to confront Park Yinseo. Eventually, Park Dalbong safely escorted everyone into the house. Park Yinseo effortlessly dismantled the protective system established by Jairim using her claws, steadily advancing towards him. Now facing each other, their subsequent battle proved to be more evenly matched than before. Instantly, Jerim activated a skill combination, leaving Park Yin Seo dumbfounded by the colossal footprint left on her. It was a clash between rulers of the world. Park Yin Seo endured the assault of the colossal foot using her strength. Subsequently, she managed to destroy the foot, but Jairim swiftly approached her, unleashing the power of a mighty palm. Park Dalbong, who witnessed the incident from inside the house, was greatly astonished. He suspected that it was the protective spirit of the eight provinces of Joseon, known as the Power of the Palm, which originated from the eight provinces. The attack caused Park Yin Seo to grimace in pain, prompting Jerem to retaliate immediately. This time, he utilized his iron chain and unleashed the second form of the Hoseon Heavenly Demon Martial Arts, known as the Chaos Dance Tiger. As a result of the attack, Park Yin Seo was forcefully thrown deep into the forest. Jerem stood proudly, believing that he had defeated Park Yin Seo. However, shortly after, Park Yin Seo emerged from the forest and approached Jerem slowly. Instantly, she emitted a powerful energy from her body. Intrigued, Jerem activated his analysis skill to gather information about the woman. He discovered that she possessed a nucleus with a durability level of 88%. If defeated, the queen's figure would also vanish. With swift movements, Park Yin Seo launched an attack with her feet. However, Jerim's response was equally swift, allowing him to evade the attack successfully. Jerim was surprised to learn that Park Yin Seo also possessed martial arts skills. Just as Park Yin Seo attempted to attack him again, Jerim seized one of her legs and brought her down to the ground. This caused the resistance of the nucleus to decrease to 77%. Upon Yerim's attempt to strike her, Mr. Yinso vanished from her spot. She executed a swift and nimble maneuver that surpassed Yerim's own speed. Subsequently, they engaged in combat, resulting in their bodies being flung in opposite directions. Meanwhile, Park Dalbong, observing their skirmish, sensed the need to intervene, fearing the potential dangers of such a fierce confrontation. With divine martial arts bestowed upon him by the heavens, Park Dalbong was once a conceited martial artist fixated on his own prowess. His arrogance led him to disregard the importance of respecting others. As the 23rd master of the Hoseon Celestial Demon Martial Art, a national cultural treasure, Park Dalbong's son, Park Sun-hyun, displayed no interest in martial arts, much to his father's disdain. This lack of passion infuriated Park Dalbong, causing him to view his son as insignificant and unworthy. When his son eventually ran away from home, leaving behind a note expressing regret for not living up to his father's expectations, Park Dalbong was left to ponder the situation. Despite his initial resolve to move on, news of Park Soon Hyun's untimely passing reached him through visitors, prompting him to rush to the funeral home. Upon his arrival, he encountered a young girl mourning her deceased parents. The young girl promptly referred to Park Dalbong as her grandfather. She was absolutely certain of his identity, because she had seen a photograph of him given to her by her father. Overwhelmed with emotion, the little girl immediately embraced Park Dalbong tightly while crying uncontrollably. It was at that moment that Park Dalbong realized he had a granddaughter. Without hesitation, Park Dalbong extended an invitation to Park Yin So to reside in the heavenly demon martial arts realm, where he would care for her in the years to come. He attended to her every need, from feeding and playing with her to bathing her, all for the sake of his beloved grandchild. Although Park Dalbong faced numerous challenges, he came to understand that there were things in life 
that held greater value than martial arts alone. Despite lacking affection, Park Yinseo grew into a remarkable individual, surpassing all others. To Park Dalbong, his only granddaughter was an irreplaceable treasure in this world. Recalling the eighth form of the Joseon Heavenly Demon martial arts, the final technique that required him to harness immense power within himself, Park Dalbong realized he would need to sacrifice his own life in order to obtain the power to save his cherished granddaughter. Prior to this, he sent a message to Yung Yun Chun, expressing his deep love for his granddaughter. Without hesitation, Park Dalbong mobilized all his strength, prepared to do whatever it took to rescue Park Yin Seo, even if it meant sacrificing his own life. Depicted a fierce battle between Jairim and Park Yisian, with the latter dominating due to her unexpectedly immense strength. When Park Yisian moved to strike Jairim, Park Dalbong intervened just in time, redirecting the attack towards Park Yisian. Demonstrating the true martial arts of the Yoseon Heavenly Demon, Park Dalbong was enveloped in a powerful energy. The quest window then appeared, informing Jerim that he was witnessing a masterful display with a 100% increase in skill. This left Jerim puzzled, questioning the source of the old man's incredible power. With satisfaction, Park Dalbong instructed Jerim to step back as he took charge of his granddaughter. As Park Dalbong prepared for what seemed to be his final battle, he swiftly charged towards Park Yisian, sending her flying back with a powerful blow. Enraged, Park Yisian retaliated, only to be met with Park Dalbong's swift and powerful counterattack. In response, Park Yisian quickly erected a barrier to shield herself from Park Dalbong's sneak attack. Park Dalbong forcefully pushed her while attempting to revive his unconscious granddaughter. He also reminded her of the life principles she had held dear. A fierce altercation ensued between the two, culminating in a powerful explosion. Undeterred, Park Dalbong assumed an attacking stance, ready to strike Park Yaseo once again. Both of them faced each other, prepared to engage in combat. To his surprise, Park Dalbong found his granddaughter seemingly unharmed despite enduring all the attacks. In an instant, Park Yaseo extended her hand, summoning a grotesque monster from beneath the ground. Determined not to let anyone impede his path, Park Dalbong launched an assault on the monster, shattering it into pieces. Witnessing this, Park Yiseo grew furious and forcefully threw Park Dalbong aside. Just as Park Yiseo was about to attack Park Dolbang, Jerem intervened, blocking the strike. Park Yiseo possessed such immense strength that she could simultaneously attack both of them. Park Dalbong was flung far away, while Jerem was propelled into the wall behind him. Professor Kim and Yung Yun Chun, witnessing the unexpected turn of events, were taken aback. They had not anticipated that even when attacking together, they would still be unable to defeat Yiseo. Park Yiseo approached Park Dalbong and tightly choked him, lifting his body high off the ground. Park Dalbong winced in pain. Desperate to awaken his granddaughter, Park Dalbong gently held Park Yiseo's cheek. Instantly, a memory flashed in Park Yiseo's mind, depicting the moments she had spent with her grandfather. At the moment Park Yiseo was taken by surprise, Park Dalbong seized the opportunity to launch an attack and was determined not to let her escape. With all his strength, Park Dalbong targeted a weak spot on a crystal in front of him, which was slightly cracked. He then instructed Jerim to strike without delay. Jerim promptly unleashed the power of the second form of Joseon Heavenly Demon, known as the Chaos Dance Tiger. As a result, the core was completely obliterated. The quest window immediately confirmed the successful completion of the emergency mission and the Queen's conquest. However, Yerim's body weakened from the strain of using powerful skills, causing him to collapse. Gazing at the fallen Park Dalbong, Jerim closed his eyes and lost consciousness. Jerim suddenly awoke in a room, his body wrapped in bandages and an IV attached to his hand. A quest notification popped up informing him of a reward for completing the mission to stop the queen's transformation. Jerim had the opportunity to select two skills and combine them as he desired. Upon activating the synthesis skill, a temporary special skill would be granted. Shortly after, Professor Choi entered the room upon realizing Jerim was awake. 
Jerem, puzzled by his unfamiliar surroundings, inquired about his location. Professor Choi disclosed that he was currently in the second building. Jerem promptly drew back the window curtain and gazed outside, marveling at the beauty of the surroundings. Professor Choi revealed that Jerem had been unconscious for an entire month, leaving Jerem astonished by the revelation. To ease his concerns, Professor Choi directed his attention to the catheter beside him and promptly summoned a doctor for further evaluation. Moments later, the doctor arrived to examine Jerem's condition, addressing him as the chairman. The doctor acknowledged Jerem's heroic deeds and leadership in the village, expressing gratitude for his sacrifices. Jerem blushed at the doctor's praise. After the doctor utilized his mana to heal Jerem, Jerem quickly realized that the doctor had undergone an awakening. The doctor confirmed this by explaining that he had received a magic stone from Professor Choi, which enabled him to awaken. Furthermore, the doctor informed Jerem that he would receive similar treatments for a week in order to regain his ability to walk. Grateful for the doctor's assistance, Jerem expressed his thanks. In response, the doctor smiled warmly and humbly stated that his actions were insignificant compared to what he had received from Jerem. Without delay, the quest window notified Jerem that the expert had favored him, allowing for the transfer of skills. Jerem promptly activated the transmission skill, and the quest window informed him that the synthesis skill had been activated, enabling him to temporarily combine medicine and acoustics into a skill called healing sound. Instantly, Yerim felt a surge of energy in his hand, which represented the healing sound skill, and he immediately infused it into his body. Jerem sensed that this skill had the potential to invigorate his body. The quest window confirmed that his physical condition was rapidly improving. Consequently, Yerim removed the IV tube from his hand and rose from the bed. Witnessing this, the doctor became panicked, as he believed Yerim was still unable to walk. However, Jerem defied expectations and assured them that he had indeed recovered. Professor Choi gestured towards the massive ball and explained that it represented Yiseo's mind. Jerem promptly activated his analysis skill. The window quest informed him that the barrier surrounding Park Yiseo's mind was remarkably resilient, despite its outward appearance as a simple knot. Professor Choi had previously attempted to enter but was unsuccessful due to the formidable nature of the barrier. Professor Choi emphasized the importance of saving his memories before destroying him. Jerim decided to try something and activated the mental pressure, causing a crack in the mind wall. Without hesitation, Jerim entered the small hole that appeared. In Park Yiseo's mind, a man blamed her for his death, along with others attacking and accusing her. Park Dalbong, her grandfather, also appeared in her mind, blaming his granddaughter. Feeling overwhelmed by the situation, Park Yiseo thought she might go crazy. However, Yairim suddenly appeared in her mind, offering help. Began with Jairim greeting Park Yiseo, who appeared visibly exhausted. This made Jairim wonder how long she had been trapped in such a place. Jairim reassured her that he was there to help and extended an invitation for Park Yiseo to escape from this situation. However, as they attempted to leave, they were suddenly restrained by the others who immediately blamed Park Yiseo. In response, Jerim quickly activated his analysis skill, which revealed that they were traumatized by Park Yiseo and believed they couldn't escape. The quest window confirmed that they would continuously appear, trapped in this state. Jerim promptly reminded Park Yiseo that the blame did not lie with her. He offered his assistance and tried to convince her that they were not the individuals from her memory. Park Yiseo stared intently at their faces and gradually began to recall that her troops were once skilled martial artists. She realized that her fear had transformed them into monsters. Without hesitation, Jerim activated his mental care skill and bestowed it upon Park Yiseo. Park Yiseo slowly approached her men and humbly bowed before them, expressing her apologies. Suddenly she attacked their monstrous forms, but they swiftly returned to their original selves. They expressed their gratitude to their master, conveying their joy in being able to spend time with her. Her students assured her that they would always remain in her memory and encouraged her to continue living her life. Gradually, they vanished from Park Yiseo's presence.
Parkiseo's eyes widened as she flipped through the pages of the book Professor Choi had given her. The information inside was shocking and made her heart race. She realized that Yerim had been keeping a secret from her all this time. Park Yaseo felt a mix of emotions, confusion, betrayal, and anger. She knew she had to confront Yerim about this revelation, but she also feared what his response would be. As she looked up from the book, determination set in her eyes. She was ready to uncover the truth and face whatever consequences it may bring. Meanwhile, Jerem sat alone on a bench in the park, contemplating his surroundings. Professor Choi approached him without hesitation. Jerem expressed his surprise at the seemingly happier faces of the people here. Professor Choi explained that it was because they had escaped from a hellish existence and could now live a normal life. The conversation then shifted to the topic of magic stones. Professor Choi believed that they needed more of these stones as they had the power to strengthen objects and awaken people. Remembering Jerem's previous mention of the stones being similar to XP potions, Professor Choi enhanced the generator machine, making it highly efficient. Motivated by this, Jerem wasted no time and set out to explore the area, determined to collect as many magic stones as possible. Park Yaseo joined him, confident in her ability to kill zombies. Jerem agreed and borrowed a motorcycle from Professor Choi. With Jerem riding at high speed and Park Yaseo tightly holding onto him, they encountered a group of monsters blocking their path. Fearlessly, Park Yiseo took on the monsters alone, using her impressive martial arts skills to defeat them swiftly. She collected the magic stones scattered among the defeated zombies and handed them to Jerem. Continuing their journey, they stumbled upon a shop with a graffiti depicting a shield symbol on the wall. Jerem couldn't believe they had come this far. In a green and beautiful place, a bald-headed man named Young Chun was doing something on the wall. With both hands, he pressed his hands against the wall and smoke came out as if the power of the blue color appeared. He is still trying to do this. He opened his mouth to see someone who was wide-eyed. Blue power still appears and spreads in the wooden wall area. Suddenly, green plants slowly appeared due to this power. The plant that appeared was not just one, but there were quite a lot. He was still directing his two hands that had blue light. After a few minutes, the construction was finally completed. It was a great relief to be able to finish everything well, although it must drain quite a lot of energy to be expended. Instantly, he became shocked when he took a breath and saw towards the back there was Jerim and a muscular man named Dalbong, like they wanted to fight. He was very surprised and shouted loudly. Young Chun got sick of seeing Jerim and Dalbong doing this. They were like people who had nothing to do at all. Yerim really wanted to be able to control his leg movements this time, but unfortunately, he seemed to have difficulty doing so. This is not an easy thing. It requires special training to really be able to do it perfectly. Jerim will keep trying to do this move. Jerim's two feet were already surrounded by the power of the blue-colored light that appeared. Jerim with his hand movement still near his cheek like someone who wants to punch. Meanwhile. Dalbong always shows off his muscles and big body. Dalbong has released his strength. He can't wait to start all this. There is no need to delay for a long time. All over the body, the muscular man is covered in blue light as a sign that his strength is well regulated. Dalbong uses the second formation of Joseon Heavenly Demon Martial Arts. Where this power is, there is a ferocious tiger figure who controls it. The battle that the two will do is very fierce. Jerim remains in his position and does not want to let his guard down in this case. He will remain on guard and should not be fooled by the opponent in front. Jerim was worried about himself. If he let his guard down, he would fall and lose to Dalbong. Jerim will not just give up. Dalbong has made an attack on Jerim so that he fell to the ground. Dalbong is very eager to excel in this battle. He will attack again because he sees Jerim still not getting up from his fall. Jerem was shocked, confused to see conditions like this. Then he would do a quick way to avoid the deadly attack. The attack given can be faster. Dalbong is very happy to be able to attack Jerem once with all his heart. This will open up opportunities for Dalbong to be able to show off his strength. If he wins, he will definitely be very arrogant to Jerem and the others. Moreover, Dalbong's face when fighting is very scary. No hair, thick eyebrows, thick mustaches and big eyes that often glare at people in front of their eyes. 
Jerim must be able to avoid attacks from this Dalbong. If not, then he will laugh with joy to see Jirim who was battered due to losing this battle. Jirim will not let this happen. Jerim was already back on his feet. He wanted the strength in his legs to be reconcentrated. He must really be able to control his own legs. The purpose of this is to make Jirim stronger. Jerim will organize his foot movement patterns so that they can be relied upon properly. Jerem is a man who never wants to give up under any circumstances. Jerem is still training the strength of his legs so he can beat the Dalbong in front of him. Before starting to attack, they are still getting ready and scaring each other. Dalbong can no longer wait to attack Jerem because earlier it was delayed due to Jerem practicing his leg movements. The fight is getting very fierce. Jerem is sure this time he will give a blow to the Dalbong. Attack after attack is given by both. With all his might, Jerem will continue to advance and attack Dalbong. Jerem did not want to lose in this fierce battle. They are still not tired at all. Continuing to attack is exciting but tiring for both of them because it drains the energy in the body. With ferocity, Jerem drove into Dalbong's direction using his feet. His foot almost hit the face of the muscular man, but unfortunately Dalbong managed to avoid Jerem's foot that wanted to hit his face. Dalbong was very upset how could Jerem jump and make a movement to attack his face. Dalbong is increasingly challenged to defeat Jerem in these conditions. Dalbong immediately said Jerem was a very clever bastard. Dalbong will do more sadistic things. He immediately replied to the actions taken by Jerem. With ease, Dalbong immediately pulled one of Jerim's legs so that it could not move. He deliberately did this so that slowly Jerim could lose and Dalbong won. He laughed because he managed to hold Jerim's leg. Indeed, his students should be given lessons like this. Dalbong asked Jerim to do it somewhere else. This will be a very exciting thing as well as testing whose strength is stronger. When Dalbong and Jerim were fighting, Professor Kim came from the air along with his animals. He landed and approached Dalbong and Jerim. After arriving and setting foot on the ground, Professor Kim informed that now the time had come. After the last two days, many things had happened, and it was very tiring. Jerim immediately stopped the fight and looked at Professor Kim for his conversation. Jerim was thinking about something that had passed. At that time, Jerim and the muscular man were training. Dalbong said about the movement to control the legs. Jerim, as a young man, has learned a lot. One of the things he learned was heavenly demon martial arts from Elder Dalbong. There is a notification about an expert's favorability towards Jerim has been renewed. While the skill transition was successful, namely animal communication at rank F. Even not only that was obtained by Jerim, he has gotten a new skill from Professor Kim. Jerim was very happy and felt very lucky to be able to get all of this. Even Professor Kim's animals immediately approached Jerem. He immediately wrapped the animal with power like a ball wrapped in blue light. Notification was also obtained that Jerem had communicated with Hanuel. Then the result will receive special abilities. Special abilities have been given to Jerem as the recipient. The next day, Jerem was eating a chocolate snack and Professor Kim was there. He invited Professor Kim to go. Jerem reminded Professor Kim to make movements with what had been studied before. He didn't want to deviate or anything. Jerem wanted to be really careful in this matter. Don't let there be a mistake that can cancel everything. Professor Kim immediately agreed to whatever order Jerem wanted. He will activate the wooden construction skill. Under Jerem and Professor Kim was the ground. They rose above the wooden beam. Slowly getting higher and higher, the size is very high like a tower and defeats the tall buildings around it. Yerim and Professor Kim are above the altitude. They can see the area below. The bright sunlight was immediately hot and glaring. Jerim covered his face with his hands. The height of the structure had already reached its limit, so it could no longer be raised. Jerim was very happy to be able to do this. Even though it used a lot of mana, it was already a great help in Jerim's important plan. Professor Kim looked at the building in front of him, and monitored his house there. The cityscape was very worrying. Not a single person appeared due to this strange disaster. In Jerem's hand, there was a chain that supported him. He invited Professor Kim to go there immediately. They descend in altitude together, 
the special ability will be turned on. The three of them wear wingsuit, wing-like power to fly in the air. By using this, it will be safe to arrive at the destination or above the tall building. The land under the Jerem was already occupied, so it was quite a relief. But there was no one occupying the building. Professor Kim was shocked to see the city in this condition. He didn't think that this would happen and make everyone unable to get out in this situation. Jerem was also very concerned about the situation below. Besides, there are no people in this city. But there were zombies roaming around and it was very scary. The bodies of these zombies are very pathetic with a variety of unfortunate conditions. The thing that makes Jerem feel surprised when he sees zombies seem to have no interest in the bodies of humans. He wondered what had really happened. These zombies kept walking until they made the city dirty. Jerem wanted to know what the zombies were doing there. It looked like a large carcass and was surrounded by several zombies. The place was dark and very creepy, a truly disgusting and alarming situation. The huge carcasses had been swarming with liquid clots and were moving to cover the victims who had become zombies. Jerem was still in the air with a bad feeling about this. The large, dead, human-bodied carcass was immediately able to revive due to a mutation. He woke up with an even creepier figure. This will definitely create new problems because it has revived other creatures. Dealing with normal zombies already feels very difficult. Moreover, facing extraordinary zombies, then this will be a big threat. The business this time was with zombies who had mutated and then came back to life. Yerim would never have thought that there was a stalker too. This is a very serious condition. But now, Yerim will focus on his main goal first so that everything can be completed properly. Jerem will immediately land in a place that is safe from the zombie outbreak, when landing on a small ornamental tree growing in a pot. Professor Kim was very happy that there was a crow that landed there. The number was not just one, but more than five. Professor Kim immediately welcomed the crows with excitement. The crow cawed when the yellow hare came near its perch. The crow immediately approached and headed towards Professor Kim. There was something unexpected that happened, namely that Professor Kim immediately had crow wings. Jerem was shocked to see the change in Professor Kim. Jerem wanted to know what happened. Professor Kim said this was his new power that had emerged. Professor Kim was very excited to be able to use the new crow wings. He immediately tried it in the air. While in the air, Professor Kim asked Jerem to hurry back to his house right now. Jerem saw Professor Kim flying with the new wings. He said Professor Kim seemed a little stingy and didn't want to fly together. Jerem, who was on the rooftop, immediately flew using the wing shut. The crows surrounded Professor Kim and Jerem. The creepy zombies below saw Professor Kim, Jerem, and the crows. They were very disturbed and wanted to eat them. The zombies flocked to catch the one above the air. The zombies below released strands into the air. This made Professor Kim and Jerem panic. They attacked this zombie outbreak can rise into the air. Professor Kim and Jerem become trapped and will fall if they cannot avoid this attack. The conditions they were in were very tense. Jerem tried to avoid this with his power. Jerem will utilize the chain in his hand to avoid this dangerous zombie plague. This bad situation will be overcome by Jerem. He asked Professor Kim to go first in order to be safe from this sudden attack. The thing Jerem will do is bait these zombies. After everything is done, then he will follow Professor Kim but he didn't want to just leave Jerem under these circumstances. He will not be able to let this happen and hurt Jerem. Professor Kim will still help Jerem no matter what. Jerem is still eager to defeat the zombies that have attacked him. Some zombies see Jerem above the air and give an attack. With his strength, Jerem will make this zombie completely helpless. The resistance between the two is so fierce. Jerem quickly activated Firework E to give an attack to the zombies below. Now Jerem is getting stronger to provide resistance to the zombie. The attack continues without tiring. With the power of fire and chains owned by Jerem can be utilized properly. Especially in circumstances like this, it is very good to be able to master everything. Jerem is in the air will provide an extraordinary attack to defeat the zombies. Part of the zombie's body burned due to receiving attacks from Jerem. One by one it melted and separated from its parts. The zombies were thrashing in the heat from the fire attack. The faces of the zombies were so terrible and seemed to be screaming in pain. Monitoring from the air, 
Jerem saw that there were still zombies alive and looking towards him. It's time for Jerem to react again to defeat the zombies. Jerem will go down and be near the many zombies. They immediately thrashed, wanting to prey on Jerem who was there. The atmosphere became very tense because these zombies were very dangerous if Jerem was not careful. Jerem used his strength to attack once. Instantly, the ferocious zombie immediately lay helpless. After all, the zombies did not move. Behind Jerem is a large zombie figure like a mutated monster. He came up behind Jerem and wanted to attack. Jerem was immediately wary of this. If not, then he will be attacked. This large zombie figure had previously been defeated by Jerem until his body was split. Now it has mutated and can rise again to destroy all of this. Jerem immediately took cautionary action. He immediately rose into the air using chains and used his firepower. Jerem will not let this big zombie kill him. With all his might, Jerem will continue to fight until everything is resolved. Suddenly the zombie that didn't move immediately woke up. They come from behind Jerem and will head towards him. Zombies woke up in large numbers. This is a bad situation for Jerem because there are many that he will face. Especially the ferocious giant body zombies, Jerem immediately jumped off the wall to take a comfortable position when attacking. Even the big zombie picked up the small zombie and strangled it with superpowers. Jerem saw the object used by the giant zombie. He was worried about the object. But above all this, Jerem will not give up, even though the monster zombie has an object in his hand. Jerem attacked the zombie again, but the giant zombie had super strength, so Jerem seemed overwhelmed to reply. An explosion managed to make the atmosphere very chaotic. The explosion made other zombies become distracted and look towards the direction of the origin of the explosion. This big explosion made Jarim go to avoid keeping himself safe and not being affected by whatever it was. Jerem decided to run away and take a short break. Fighting large zombies made Jerem become overwhelmed, so he had to rest. Jerem left the place as quickly as possible to find a safe friend. The sunrise was very beautiful in the afternoon with a view of the city that had been tainted by terrible zombies. In a room, Yerim sat in a corner due to exhaustion. Yerim looked towards the window. There are still a lot of zombies wandering around looking for prey. Because of his fatigue, Yerim was sweating because he faced the zombies. But he was very grateful for being able to escape the explosion. When he looked back at the window, Jerem saw a house that looked beautiful. But the house was not affected by the plague at all. It was the only place that was not surrounded. Yerim was interested to check it out. Maybe there was something interesting there. Yerim immediately stood up and wanted to find out for himself what was happening in the house. He wanted to make sure if anyone lived in the house or if there were no more occupants. He immediately rushed to go there. He arrived in front of the gate of the house. He is still looking towards the house whether there is anyone or not. In Yerim's ear, he heard a faint voice. He had a bad feeling that the source of this sound came from this area. When looking up at the house, Jerem saw a man standing. He looked with observant eyes and made sure it was a human, not a zombie. The male human who was above was only wearing a white singlet shirt, and his body was fat. Jerem saw that the man above his house was very anxious. He must be very scared in a situation like this. From the front gate, Jerem immediately activated his skill, namely mental care. Then Jerem said, Excuse me first to the owner of the house. Jerem asked permission to speak briefly with him. The man above immediately replied. The man said whether Jerem wanted to meet other survivors before he asked Jerem whether he had food or not. Jerem, who cares about others, immediately takes out his food and will give it to the man. While Jerem was still outside the fence of the man's house and he went straight into his house, Jerem was invited to sit there. Previously, the man introduced his name was Ryu Dongtak. He used to be an acoustic professor. Ryu's age is currently entering the age of 56 years. Ryu continued to ask the identity of Jerem because he did not know him at all. Jerem also introduced himself to Ryu. Since being around this house, Jerem has been disturbed because he hears voices constantly. Ryu was surprised that Jerem could hear the sound. As far as Ryu knew, the sound could not be heard by ordinary humans. Jerem was also confused if the sound he heard 
could not be heard by humans. According to Ryu's knowledge, the sound heard by Jairim is a low frequency that he installed himself. That is why around here is not surrounded by zombie monsters. Moreover, out there are already many buildings affected by the zombie plague is very deadly. Ryu made all this so that his house could remain safe from the dangers and disturbances of terrible zombies. Ryu explained the answer with a smile to Jerim. If Jerim wants, Ryu will give the sound recording file that he made. That way Jerim can use it at home too. Jerim immediately fell silent hearing Ryu offer this disturbing sound. Professor Kim has turned into a crow's wing. Dalbong sees the new skill he has. Dalbong immediately smiles happily at the latest crow's wing. But he didn't see Jerim's existence earlier. Though Dalbong really wants to meet Jerim, the beginning was indeed since earlier Jaram left with Professor Kim. When zombies came to attack Jaram and Professor Kim from the air, Jaram tries to save Professor Kim from a very dangerous zombie attack. Jaram insisted on being able to save Professor Kim. He immediately told him to leave and would catch up later after everything was done. After the crow disappeared, Professor Kim returned to explain that Jaram fell into the place where the zombies swarmed. Professor Kim conveyed this with a haggard face and full of anxiety. Hearing about this, Dalbong was very panicked and emotional. If it is true that Jairim fell into a group of zombies, this will be very dangerous and threaten his life. Dalbong did not accept if Jairim fell in and was trapped by the deadly hell. He really regretted that this could happen so easily. Dalbong immediately shouted at Professor Kim who conveyed the info. Dalbong was so emotional that he questioned what the use of the latest crow's wings was. If it couldn't do anything, it was a lie. Dalbong still holds Professor Kim's shoulder. He explained that the atmosphere was very chaotic because the zombie body could stretch into the air. That's why Jerim told Professor Kim to leave as soon as possible. They grabbed each other because Jerim was threatened. Young Chun asked Dalbong and Professor Kim what happened. Dalbong, who is still emotional, tells Yairim's current situation. Yairam alone has been trapped in the sea of zombie hell. This is very dangerous. Plus, there is no one to help Jerem in that place. Professor Kim immediately sat down and felt very guilty for the actions he took. On the other hand, Dalbong gallantly said he would leave immediately. Young Chun, who is behind, thinks that Dalbong has lost his own mind. Whereas previously Dalbong said the place was very scary like hell, still he was very excited to go there. Dalbong has a high ambition. He will beat using only his bare hands. Weapons are not needed by Dalbong because his strength is already strong. Professor Choi, who is there, also believes that Dalbong can win as long as there are only one or two of them. Professor Choi is very worried if Dalbong is surrounded and cannot fight one by one. This is certainly very dangerous for himself. Young Chun strongly agreed with what Professor Choi said. This is the truth. There can't be only a few zombies. The number is very large and dangerous. Even worse, it can make Dalbong become a backache when facing one by one. Dalbong was so exasperated that he begged Young Chun. He asked for good advice not to argue about this. Young Chun immediately mocked Dalbong, the damn person who thought that Yararim easily died there. Dalbong felt very emotional about this until he was speechless. Young Chun immediately held Dalbong's shoulder. According to Professor Choi, it doesn't feel good at this time of year. The most important thing is to always be careful in any case. Moreover, acting like he wants to do something is good to think carefully so that no mistakes happen. Professor Choi asked Professor Kim to deliver the goods using his raven. Professor Kim also agreed because according to him, the animals will not be attacked. So this is very possible to do. Young Chun asked everyone to start moving. First is to collect all the needs and keep an eye on the surroundings. First is much better. Not forgetting in this case, as Dalbong already said, they definitely need great fighters. Then all the responsibilities are given to people who can be relied on. Professor Choi has not found anyone who is willing in this case. Professor Kim also thinks who is the person who deserves to carry such a heavy burden. Dalbong suggested that the responsibility would be accepted by his granddaughter. Dalbong's granddaughter's name is Yi Seo. She is very good at martial arts since she was a child. Dalbong always trained his granddaughter since childhood, and until adulthood she could do it. Dalbong is confident that his granddaughter can survive, 
and she has started to rise for now. Yiseo has reliable skills and responsibilities. Dalbong assured everyone that he could guarantee this well. Dalbong's face smiled to convince everyone in this place, namely Professor Kim, Professor Choi, and Young Chun. Young Chun also believes that. This is because Dalbong's grandson is definitely reliable, and there is no need to doubt his performance. Young Chun personally agrees if this is entrusted to Yiseo, the grandson of Dalbong. Professor Choi first wanted to ask how to meet with Yiseo directly. Before everything is agreed, it would be better to have a meeting with Yiseo. Hearing Professor Choi's words, Dalbong explained that his grandson was in the heavenly Josean art dojo, precisely in the city of Namsan Chunchen. The place is for special martial arts training or school. So far, Dalbong's grandson has been very active in martial arts. Even at school, he still participated in martial arts. On the other hand, showing the atmosphere of the Dalbong grandson's martial arts school, Yiseo, who wears special clothes. At the school, there are also other friends. Yiseo has become an adult woman with her martial arts skills. Meanwhile, Professor Kim showed his cell phone and there was a photo of Yiseo. He told the photo to Young Chun. He asked to find the girl Yiseo in the photo. Professor Kim also asked the crow to go looking for Jerim's whereabouts. The crow immediately launched its action by carrying a paper and food. They flew across several places, especially through places that had been overrun by zombies. Ryu and Jerim were already outside and were waiting for the crow to deliver the food. Jarim was still looking at the sky. He immediately realized that the crow had arrived and was about to land. Jerim was very happy about all this. Finally, the crow arrived. There was a letter, then some food that was sent specially. Jerim immediately opened the letter and checked it. Ryu didn't expect the crows to actually come and deliver some food. He was very grateful for all this. At first, Ryu didn't just believe Jerim. Moreover, Jerim is a person who has just been known, so it's not that easy to just trust. Jerim immediately assured Ryu that he believed in him. Ryu guessed that Jerim had a good place to hide, then have good colleagues willing to help each other. Now Ryu says he trusts Jerim. Ryu felt like he impolite. He wanted to go with Jerim too. He felt it would be safe to stay with the Jerim. Ryu is very afraid if zombies enter his house and mess all this up. With great pleasure, Jerim allowed Ryu to join his team all this time. Jerim said welcome to Ryu who was willing to join him. He immediately activated the skill, namely transmission to Ryu. Ryu's body was immediately covered by the power possessed by Jerim, especially on Ryu's face. By using his power, Jerim will recruit Ryu for his availability to join together. Now it is entering the skill acquisition on Ryu. After doing so, finally the skill acquisition has succeeded well. In this way, Ryu and Jerim could escape from this place easily. Everything is finished. Jairim and Ryu will return to a safe place.